Well, I'm happy to have you all. Thank you for taking time out of today and your week to be here. Um, let's get started. Let's get into the good stuff and give ourselves a little bit of what we might need. I do want us to start with um, the mantra that I introduced a couple of weeks ago. If you have the mantra sheets, um, you can use those. I'm gonna share my screen tonight if you'd like to see it. Um, this is the Om Sahana Vava Tu mantra. And let's see there, so I can still see you guys and I can see this. So we'll start in a seated position. And what we'll do is do call and response this evening. So you wanna be in a comfortable seated position. You wanna be mindful of your posture. Um, you can either choose to join in in the call and response, or you can simply just take this time to sit with your breath, doing our mental check-ins. And basically this mantra is about coming together to study, um, to improve our understanding of ourselves and each other, our capacity to understand and coming together to, to discover these things in harmony. So this is a mantra that um, is often used at the beginning of any type of class or any type of uh, um, kind of group collective practice. So how this will work is once I get to my mat and come in a seated position, I will chant the first line and then the response will be, I'll repeat that first line and you can chime in as well at home. So that's what we will do to begin our practice. Whoop. How do I go back to the other one? There we go. Um, we don't know, we're still waiting for one test. All right, so I am gonna put us on mute for now. And then throughout class, you can ask or unmute yourself as needed. Sorry, the... Even though I'm on Zoom all day long at school, it always is a little bit of a learning curve. Okay. Okay, so comfortable seated position. Let's sit up on some type of support unless you do have very open hips. Let's find our sit bones so we can sit up nice and tall through the whole length of our spine. Support underneath the knees as well as needed. Sukhasan or easy cross is fine. Any other position that works for your body this evening as well. We may take the traditional mudra of chin mudra, our seal of wisdom or knowledge, index finger to thumb, the other three fingers extended, placing the hands on the knees, palms up. Stretch the spine up nice and long, all the way up the back to the crown of the head. Make any adjustments you might need to in your seat so that we can find a place that we feel comfortable and we can cultivate stillness here. Closing the eyes so that we can bring our awareness inward. Letting go of where we just came from. Letting go of any to-do list we might have. Mentally bundling up any stress or worries that we may have been carrying around this week or today. And placing all those things outside of our space. If we really need them at the end of our practice, they'll be waiting for us. So we do not need to think about them from this point forward. Instead, let's bring our awareness into the body. Taking a mental scan of our body this evening. Soften the muscles around the face. Poof the cheeks with air. Feel the weight of the shoulders and elbows, the gentle weight of the hands on the knees. Soften around the belly and the abdomen. 
Relax around the hips, the hip creases and hip sockets. Down the legs, behind the knees, and to the ankles, feet and toes. Notice the contact points with the legs and each other. And also the contact points with the lower half of our body and our prop and the floor. Allowing the lower half of the body to be connected to the ground, to feel the natural pull of gravity towards the earth. So that we may extend and lengthen the upper half of our body like a tree growing upwards towards the sky, vertebra by vertebra, all the way up the spine. If we are healing or taking care of anything this evening, let's honor and recognize those areas. Remembering that we each have permission to modify and adjust our practice accordingly. And now spreading our awareness to the rhythm of the breath. Simply observe the natural flow of our breath, watching the body breathe in and watching the body breathe out. We might notice the flow of breath around the nostrils, the tip of the nose. You might notice some subtle sounds the breath might be making through the throat. Notice any subtle movement in the body around the rib cage, the chest, the back, the sides, all the way down into the abdomen. Allow this breath to be as smooth and even as possible in and out through the nose. And we're also going to start our practice with yogic breathing or diaphragmic pranayama. On our next inhale, we'll relax the belly completely and we'll watch the belly expand like a balloon. When we get to our exhale, we'll draw the belly back into the body, gently contracting those abdominal muscles, pulling the navel towards the spine. On the inhale, we relax the belly, allowing it to expand, letting the diaphragm drop down, pulling that breath deep into our lungs. On the exhale, drawing the belly back into the body, navel towards spine, pushing the diaphragm back up, helping to expel the old air out of the lungs. Move at your own rhythm and pace. Our yogic breathing is the foundation for our pranayama work. Being able to wake up and identify these muscles in the area of the abdomen. Belly breathing is also a very relaxing pranayama and has a profound effect on our nervous system helping to reduce anxiety and stress levels in the body. We'll continue with this deeper breathing or we'll move this into our mantra exercise tonight, which in and of itself also works the abdominal muscles using our diaphragm to chant. If you feel like you need to rearrange your seat or your legs, do so at this time. 
Again, we'll be opening with the Om Sahana Vava 2 mantra and call and response. So I will chant the first line of the mantra and then we will repeat it together. Be very mindful of the posture, especially up the spine. And then I will begin. Om Sahana Bhavatu Together Om Sahana Bhavatu Myself Sahana Bhunaktu Together Sahana Bunatu Myself Sahaviryam Karava Bahai Together Sahaviryam Karava Bahai Myself Tejas Vina Vadi Tamas Tu Together Tejas Vina Vadi Tamas Tu Myself Ma Vid Visha Vahai Together Ma Vid Visha Vahai and then I'll go through the whole mantra one time. Feel free to try to follow along. Taking a deep breath in to begin. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vina Vadi Tamas Tu Mavid Visha Bahai Om Shanti 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 Keeping the eyes closed, be mindful of our surroundings. Float the arms out beside the body with the palms up. Let's take another nice deep breath in, floating the arms up overhead. Bring the palms to touch and on the exhale, draw the hands to the heart center to Anjali Mudra. This is a nice time to pause. And again, to remember to honor ourselves and our practice this evening, to let go of any judgment and any competition, especially with our own ego, and to make a positive intention or dedication for our practice this evening. And then we'll take our hands and start to rub them together as quickly as possible. We're going to palm the eyes before we open them. So we're trying to create heat in the hands. When you start to feel that warmth, make two cup shapes in the hands and seal the eyeballs off. So without pressing on the eyes, we're just creating two warm pockets for our hardworking eyes, especially after a long day to enjoy. At this point, we can begin to splay the fingertips, allow some light to come in and then gently blink our eyes open. Take another deep breath in. And on the exhale, release the hands back down to the lap. So from here, let's give our legs a stretch out since we have been in our seated position for a bit. One leg at a time. We can start with the knees bent and then straighten out one leg at a time, point flex the feet. Open palms, little smacking action or fist, just lightly tapping up and down those legs to get the blood flow through those legs. 
And once our legs come back to life from our seated position, we are gonna turn ourselves around to tabletop pose. So we'll come out of our seat, readjust our surroundings. We'll stack those joints, fingers spread wide, knees underneath the hips, draw the belly in, stabilizing the hips and the low back. Just start with some single leg stretching to get more blood flow through the backs of the legs, opening up the eyes and the knees. And now you can just go side to side at your own pace here, stretching out those legs while I adjust my screen. Make sure that we're pressing out through the first knuckles and those fingertips. Be mindful of where our head is in space and just get that nice stretch to open up those legs from our seated position. And welcome to those of you that just joined us. Let's meet back in tabletop neutral position. We can keep the toes tucked under, flatten out the tops of the feet, cross into the ground so that our arms are nice and strong. Cat cows. On the inhale, relax the belly, lift the tailbone, stretch and lengthen up the spine to the crown of the head, taking the drishti towards the horizon. Exhaling, draw the belly in, tuck that tailbone under, round the back to the ceiling, drawing chin to chest, bringing our drishti towards our belly button. Now come back to a nice smooth, even breath, in and out through the nose. Get some of those pelvic tilts in there, working around the area of the hips. Really try to melt the belly and the heart on the inhales for our gentle back bend. And on the exhale, also poofing up the back of the heart, spleen the shoulder blades. Add little side to side movements in the shoulders, the head, whatever feels good. Just Getting everything loosened up here. One more time, let's come back to a neutral position. So we have been working a little bit with strengthening our core for this month. So we're gonna add some of those elements in our practice as well. So do draw that low belly in. We'll re-extend the right leg straight back from the hip, follow the foot to the floor to start. Then squeeze the back, side to hover our right leg parallel to the floor. The foot is flexed, the toes are pointing straight down towards the ground. Ideally, we're keeping our low back and hips level to the floor. At this point, we will try to float the left arm forward from the shoulder, palm facing in and thumb up into our balancing spinal integration pose. So the more we can tighten the muscles around our waistline, the more we'll find a little bit more strength and stability. Keep that breath flowing in and out through the nose. Take one more breath in. On the exhale, let's bring the hand and the knee back down to the ground. Extend the left foot back, low back, hips stay level. Squeeze the left side now to hover that leg parallel to the floor. Toes pointing straight down to the ground. Hug those muscles to the midline, especially around the waist. Extend the right arm forward from the shoulder, palm in, thumb up. You wanna feel those muscles getting stronger, wrapping to the bone. Take one more breath in. And then exhale, hand and knee come back down. From here, we extend the right leg back from the hip, ball the foot to the floor. This time, we're just gonna float the right foot up a few inches from the ground, sweep it over to the left and back down to the ground. We can have the toes tucked or come back to the top of the foot. We're gonna peek over our left shoulder and give our right side a nice long body stretch here. And this is also a nice little stretch for the neck. Inhale, bring the head and the right leg back up. Lift the leg up, exhale, bring the knee down. Same thing, other side, stretch that left foot back from the hip, float it up just a couple inches, sweep it over to the right and back down to the ground. You're gonna squeeze your right side, look over the right shoulder, we're stretching the whole left side. Get your eyes into the pose, try to peek as far as you can behind you. Inhale, float the leg up. Exhale, bring the knee down. 
Let's give our low back and hips another stretch before we do a little bit more work. So our first child's pose. We'll open our knees wider than our hips, touch the big toes together. Pulling and leading from the navel, draw it in, drawing the sit bones down to the heels. Continue to reach your fingertips to the front corners of the mat. Sink the belly, the heart, and head to the ground. And then the more we can release the weight of the hips, the more we'll intensify that stretch around the hip crease across the low back. My knee people, if we're not sitting all the way back to our heels, um, grab a pillow, place it behind the creases or a blanket. You can take a blanket behind the creases of the knees. We don't even have to sit the hips all the way down to the heels, keeping the hips higher up in the sky and resting on our forearms as an option. We do want the head supported in this pose. So if our forehead isn't coming to the ground tonight, don't worry about it. Just slide your hands or prop under the forehead. Let the breath be as deep as possible in this pose, still around the abdominal region, maybe more on the side bodies and across the back for one more big breath. Next inhale, we'll float the head and the body back up. Let's reposition ourselves into our tabletop, knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders. Spread the fingers wide and walk those hands about one hand's distance forward. Tuck the toes under, draw the belly in, pressing into the ground to float our hips up, back, and down. And you may be for some of us, it is for me, our first downward facing dog of our day. So adjust your stance as needed. Feet should be parallel to each other, trying to drop those heels um, with as much symmetry as we can. Bend the knees more deeply if we need a little bit more release for the low back and we have those really tight hamstrings. We will walk our dog. We continue to stretch out the hamstrings in the back of the legs. So on our next inhale, let's lift the heels up as high as we can. On the exhale, drop the right heel to the ground, bend the left knee, and really feel that stretch behind the right knee. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, switch. Left heel to the ground, bend the right knee, stretch out the back of the left leg. Now you will continue to pedal your heels at whatever rhythm feels natural for you. Make sure we are shifting that weight down the back of the legs. You can always take a break in all fours or child's pose. Do you try to spiral inwardly through the hands, pressing through the mound of the index finger and thumb, simultaneously rolling the upper arm bones away from our ears, creating space for a nice long neck, no tension in the face or the neck. Good, and then let's find stillness in the pose. I'd like some of you have taken a quick break. That's great. Other variations. One more breath. We are gonna work our way right into our first forward fold. So take your time, inhaling, looking forward, baby stepping your feet to your hands and hands to feet. Those of us that modify for our low backs, we will bend our knees deeply placing the weight of our elbows or even the hands on our thighs so that we're not putting pressure into the low back. Those of us staying upside down in Uttanasana, you may reach towards those toes. It's okay if the fingertips don't touch the ground. Grab a hold of elbows if you'd like to ragdoll the upper half of the body. We do need to make sure that the legs are strong, that we're grounded through the four corners of the feet. This is a good time to Start thinking about those lower bandhas, mula bandha, our root lock of the pelvic floor, giving it a gentle squeeze and lift into the body. And Uddiyana bandha, just below the belly button, pulling in and up. And you trying to let go of any tightness in the neck and shoulder area. And to come up to standing, we will roll up. So we'll all micro bend our knees, place the hands on the thighs, fingers turned inward. Tuck the chin to the chest, press the feet into the ground, inhale using the strength of our core, 
We're slowly gonna come up to our standing position. The head should be the very last thing that comes up. Once we come upright, we will purposely squeeze our shoulders to our ears and then exhale, allow the shoulders to fall back down away from the body. Coming right into Tadasana. So if we need to readjust the feet and the legs, do so, so that the feet are parallel to each other. Unlock those knees, strong pulling up through the front of the thighs, drawing the front body to back body, lengthening the upper buttock to the ground. Let's pick up our toes, turn the palms forward this evening, spread the toes and the fingertips. Feel that rotation again into those upper arm bones, just gently opening up the chest. And we can turn the head side to side a couple times, drop one ear at a time to our shoulders, and then really just make sure that the head feels nice and light on top of the shoulders. If the toes are still lifted, great, let them float back down to the ground. Take a big breath in, reach out as wide as possible, all the way up to the ceiling, drawing that big circle. Bring those palms to touch, and exhale the hands to the heart. Moving right into our palm tree pose, our first balance work, at least standing upright. Focus the drishti on one spot. Inhale, fingertips down, out. As they reach up, we lift the heels up. So we're rising up on our tippy toes. Palms touch. We try to slowly come down, lowering the heels and hands back to heart. Two more with our breath. Remembering if this pose is becoming less challenging, that's good, but we can bring the challenge back by simply moving our drishti to a different spot or trying to follow the fingertips with our eyes. You could even close the eyes completely if you want. One more, last inhale, get as tall as you can. Good, and we'll meet on the exhale, heels down, hands to heart. So let's go right into some bigger standing poses this evening so that we can get into the back of the legs. We'll go for our Prasarita Pada Tadasana. We were doing that last month, but this is a nice way to um, stretch out the legs and also have an opportunity to release the head and the shoulders. And then we'll go for Prajra Tanasana. So we'll take a moment here. If you have two yoga blocks, you may use those as support moving in and especially out of this pose by taking them on their high setting, placing them towards a long edge of your mat about shoulder width apart. Anytime you're moving props around, this should be part of our practice. So we should be doing it mindfully, engaged to the core, especially if we have heavier objects. If you have a folding chair, you could also bring that in front of you and use that as a stepping stone. So let us get organized here for a moment. And then we wanna be back in the middle of the mat facing the long edge so that when we step out, we have a grip into our feet. Fingertips to heart, inhale, breathing, big step out, one foot at a time. Once we get there, if we have some space, we'll open our feet a little wider almost as wide as the flex at our wrists. Run the feet parallel to each other, toes pointing forward. Make sure that we're still rooted through the four corners of the feet and not tipping in, collapsing in, or rolling out. Draw up through the quads, pull the belly in. Inhale. Exhale, hands to hips. Elbows may draw back, firming up that upper back. Take another breath in. Exhale, turn the toes slightly in and hinge from the hips. So toes can angle in slightly to help that forward tilt in the pelvis. Coming down just a few degrees. Take another breath in, strong core. We have to use all the muscles wrapping around our waist here. Exhale, maybe we have some physical space to move into. So we will hold for several breaths. If we get to the point where our fingertips are moving to our blocks, you can follow the exhale there. Remember the inhales, we create some space. We want to keep the front of the spine as long as the back of the spine. 
Those of you that have moved more into a forward fold, you'll turn yourself more into an inversion again, even bringing fingertips to the floor, eventually walking our fingertips between the feet. You may keep your drishti below the tip of the nose, pulling the blood purposefully at the base of the skull. Or at this point, continue to engage your shoulder blades down the back and try to release the weight of the head so that we're releasing the weight of our head towards the ground, but pulling our shoulder blades away from the ears down the back. Make sure the feet and legs are strong, pulling through the belly. Inhale, breathing. We're gonna come about halfway up out of the pose. Now we are moving into another variation of this tonight. This pose is sometimes called hammock pose or wide-legged downward facing dog pose. If you are up on the seat of the chair, you may stay there if your hands are there and just continue to stretch out the backs, the legs. You may keep your hands on props, but at this point, I would have you turn your yoga blocks onto the lower setting so that they're more stable. If your fingertips are to the floor, that's fine as well. We will walk our hands forward away from the mat and allow the hips to follow. So we'll be back in our inverted V shape, downward facing dog shape. So the hands are shoulder width apart, arms reaching forward. We'll draw the belly in, pull the belly back towards the middle of our mat. We'll allow the heart to relax and the head to float between the upper arm bones. Hammock pose, wide-legged downward facing dog pose. This will intensify the stretch for some of us up the backs of those legs, through the Achilles and the calves. If that's a little bit much for us tonight, your modification is just to walk your hands back underneath the shoulders and start out in our original version of the posture tonight. One more breath here. For those of us extended outwardly, inhale, walk your hands slowly back underneath the shoulders, bring your hips back in line with the heels and the legs. Use your props, halfway lift, fingertips, the props can come up a little higher if you have the blocks. Pull in through the core. Exhale one hand at a time onto those hips. Press through the feet and on the inhale, lift up through the crown of the head. Big breath in. We're coming up from being upside down. Reach the arms out, try to inhale even more air as you reach up. Big stretch, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart. At this point, heel, toe, Step, step your feet in. We'll want to meet back in mountain pose or samas titihi. You can walk the insides of the feet and legs all the way to touch hands to heart or have your broader base arms floating down into Tadasan. Pause for a moment. Make sure our blood pressure is back and our body's back to neutral. And then relax and we'll rearrange ourselves for our next pose, Parjvottanasana sometimes called pyramid pose. We will all be stretching more now through the backs of the legs, one hamstring at a time. We'll go back to facing the front of our mat, taking both of our yoga blocks with us or placing the seat of the chair. So I'm switching to the seat of the chair. And we will step facing our props into mountain pose. Feet hips width apart, arms floating beside the body, but facing forward to our props. Ears over shoulders, shoulders over the hips. Turn the palms out. Inhale, reach up. We're creating that space in the length. Exhale, sweep the hands back down onto the hips. Hips stay facing forward, square to the mat. Smaller step, right foot steps back, just a couple feet. We are not on a tightrope, so you still have that hip twist space between the feet. Your right toes might angle out slightly. Draw the right hip forward, left hip back. Important that we're not jammed and locked into our knees. So unlock those knees, pull up through the legs, 
pull the front body to the back body. Elbows may draw slightly backwards. Inhale, opening the heart. The movement's gonna come at the hip. So as we exhale, we're tipping that pelvis forward. We're also gonna try to keep our low back level to the floor. Come down a few degrees. Inhale, create more length. Exhale, maybe there's some more space to move into. Fingertips may move to the props in front of the body. We should start to feel a big stretch up the back of the leg now into that hamstring. Use your breath and follow the breath. So again, we'll look different in this pose. So don't worry about what anybody else looks like. Just find your breath, find your pose tonight. But we might be able to deepen the stretch by bringing the fingertips further to the ground or to the props, framing the left foot bringing the drishti in front of the left foot to begin with, and then eventually the left big toe. If we can do so without compromising the spine, your belly might come a little closer towards that front thigh, eventually bringing the drishti to the left knee. And at that point, if the forehead is pretty close to the knee, you may add that throat lock, Jalandrata Bandha, chin to chest, pressing the forehead into the left kneecap. The entire time, let's draw that left thigh bone up into the hip, keeping the low back as level as possible. If you are in an inversion, just be mindful of that with blood pressure and heart conditions. One more breath. The next inhale, we'll walk the fingertips forward, back onto the props, lifting the chest about halfway. Ground into those feet, pull the belly in, exhale one hand at a time to the hips, pressing off that front foot. Inhale, lift up to the crown of the head. Gaze forward, exhale, step forward. Arms float out, Tadasan, pause here. Observe the body, the breath, and the brain. Turn the palms out, inhale, reach out and up, big stretch. Exhale, float the hands back onto the hips. Keeping the hips pointing forward to the front of the mat, left foot steps back, again, a smaller stance here, just a couple of feet. Left toes may angle out slightly. Left hip forward, right hip back, keeping the hips square. Elbows may draw back, but don't lose connection to the core. Unlock those knees, inhale. Exhale, hinge from the hips. So you're leading with the heart. You can come down nice and slow, a few degrees at a time. Inhaling, pausing. Exhaling, maybe going a little further, so take it. Baby steps will get more out of your practice instead of rushing into things, forcing things. Your body will actually tighten up to protect you and your joints. But if we move gently with the breath, we might find some more space. We're receiving a nice big stretch at the back of the right leg here. If it's available to bring the fingertips further down to the ground, you can frame the right foot, drishti in front of the right foot, keeping the spine long. Eventually watching, walking the fingertips a little further back, the belly start to come towards that front thigh, drishti to the right big toe. Try to keep that low back as level as possible to the ground. And those of you more in the inversion, belly to thigh, trishti to that right knee. If it's pretty close, you may add that throat lock, chin to chest, putting a little bit of pressure, forehead to knee. One more breath. The inhale, 
inhale, we'll float the body up about halfway, walk the fingertips forward, use your props, lift the chest. Super strong legs, ground the feet into the earth, pull that low belly in, inhale, or sorry, exhale one hand at a time to the hips, then inhale to come up, pressing off that front foot. Make sure you're breathing in to come up from being upside down. Look forward, exhale, steps forward, arms float down, Tadasana, pause and breathe. Turn the palms out, inhale, reach out, reach up. Drishti to those thumbs for a very gentle back bend. Bring the palms to touch, exhale, hands to our heart. So at this point, we will clear our space. Again, do so with nice core engagement, whether they just are light blocks, heavier blocks. Always good to practice pulling in through our abdominal muscles whenever we're picking things up and moving things. And then for our standing balance tonight, we are going to come into a variation of our half moon pose. So we're not gonna approach it like we have been in some of our other classes. It's gonna be a more passive approach. And I don't necessarily want us to use props tonight. Um, so I don't want us going that far into it. I want us to stay in a space that we can easily come out of the pose so we don't feel like we're gonna fall down towards the ground. So it's gonna be a half star, half, uh, half moon position. So we're facing the long edge of the yoga mat again, so that we can open our feet out fairly wide, not as wide as our triangle pose, but wider than our hips, little bend into those knees. On the inhale, we'll reach our arms out from our shoulders. We'll shift our weight over into the right leg and the foot and allow the left foot to try to get weight. Some of us will just be here lifting and lowering those toes. So not full half moon, but a little variation of it because our toe is face, toes are facing forward instead of turned out. Our star pose, our arms are normally out in a V, but we'll try to keep them more parallel and out from our sides. So just holding here and breathing is a challenge in and of itself. To activate a little bit more around that waistline, we'll try to lift that left foot up a little higher. You really have to be engaged into the core and we'll play with this lateral movement. So moving in this lateral plane. We're not trying to get towards the floor, reach that far down towards the ground, but I just want us to explore this movement side to side and only go to the point where we can maintain equal side bodies and a strong foot. So for some of us, we might be pretty upright. We might be kind of going up and down so we find our balance. And just supporting the weight of that leg is really gonna work these muscles through the side of the body. Most importantly, we're breathing. Good, are we danced in and out of it? That's fine, just make sure we're falling safely. We'll take one more big breath in. On the exhale, we'll land. We can land in that little wider stance of a mountain pose. Let the arms float down. Check in with the body and the breath. Inhale, arms up from the shoulders. No tension in the face and the neck. We'll lean it over to the left. Super strong left side. Start activating the right side and finding our hover. So this is powerful pose. We're hugging our muscles to the bone here, reaching out from our center of gravity. So that works the core a little bit more. Activating the side to lift the weight of that leg. Both side bodies should stay equal. If you wanna try the tip, we're not moving into that lateral flexion of the spine. We're moving here around those hips. Good, I like the challenge. Nice. Ooh. Let's try one more big breath in, whatever we're choosing. And on the exhale, <laughs> as gracefully and slowly as you can, we'll bring the feet back down. They can land wide, that's fine. 
Put the arms down here. Turn those palms forward. Open the heart. Just observe the body and the breath. It's a little bit more of an energizing pose. We might notice the heart rate went up a little bit. And inhale, reach it up. Palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart. So let's meet back towards the front of our mat. We can walk ourselves there. We will meet back one more time in Tadasan or Mountain Pose. Feet parallel now, so a little closer together, dropping right underneath those hip sockets. Unlock those knees. Draw the front body to the back body. Anchor the tailbone towards the ground. Shrug the shoulders from the ears, float the head. Back to the breath. Inhale, last chance, extended mountain, Utita Tadasan, reaching upwards, Drishti to thumbs for gentle back bend. On the exhale, micro bend those knees, swan dive the arms out, back and around to your forward fold, whatever that looks like for you. Stopping halfway, modifying or moving back into an inversion, releasing the head, neck, and shoulders, prancing the legs. Continue to pull in through those lower bandhas. Inhale, hands to shins or higher. Float the heart by engaging the back. This exhale bends the knees and plants the hands. Now we are going to take a big step back into our plank position. We've returned to our nice, powerful planks. You're welcome to be in a forearm plank if that's better for your wrists or a variation of a kneeling plank. Even if we're practicing kneeling plank, we need to pull the belly in even more to make sure we don't collapse that low back. Keep that drishti slightly forward so the neck stays long. Press into the first knuckles of the fingertips. We're gonna be here for just a happy few more moments, smiling. Feel as if you're trying to drag your feet to your hands and hands to your feet. You want a little bit more engagement around the waistline. Press into the earth. Smooth, even breath, almost there. It's five, four, three, two, one. Take a big breath in. On the exhale, float the hips up back, shift the weight down the legs, through the heels, resting position, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Float the head, sink the heels, bend the knees a little bit more as needed. Inhale, heels up. Then on the exhale, let's drop our knees to the ground, point the toes. If it's available, keep the knees together this time for our child's pose, sweeping the hands to the feet, palms up, dropping the weight of the arms and the head over the lower half of the body. Hands under the shoulders, tuck the chin, inhale, round it up. Once we come up to a seat, we'll shift our weight over to either side. And we'll walk those feet out in front of us. So we are going to take a transition now down onto our backs. You may do the slow roll down and roll ups with me tonight. This isn't for everybody. You need to make sure you're taking care of that low back. But if you'd like to join me, having a prop, a yoga block or a book is fine. Or just fingertips. If you're foregoing the roll downs tonight, Walk yourself down safely with your hands. Find yourself on your back. Adjust your clothing, move the ponytails. You're welcome to do some bridge lifts, a happy baby, whatever you would like to do for the next couple moments. Those of us trying the slow roll downs, we are articulating the spine. So I am rounding through the spine. We have a strong contraction of the abdominal muscles. Soles of the feet to the floor. The insides of my feet are touching but the soles of the feet to the ground, and then I let my knees fall wider than my hips. So I'm focusing more on my abdominals here. We take it stage by stage. You might get to a stage that you're done. 
you'll go under your back and choose to do something else. Fingertips reach forward, take a deep breath in. Exhale, pull the belly in, try to rock down onto the sacrum. And then inhale, pulling ourselves back up. Exhale, pull the belly in. We'll try to go to the sacrum and the low back. And then inhale up. Exhale, pull that belly in, low back to mid back. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale, every part of the back. So sacrum, lumbar, thoracic, shoulders. Inhale, all the way back up. One more, exhale, try to go the whole length of the spine. Nice, good job. All the way to the back of the head. And then we gotta roll all the way back up. And then this time we'll just come down as slowly as we can. Nice choices, everybody. Rolling down, bellies in, pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. This time when we come down, the head touches down, reach the arms overhead, you can place the block overhead. Straighten up the legs, coming into a long body stretch. Spread the fingers, flex the toes, let the low back arch away from the ground. On the exhale, float the arms down, walk the shoulder blades under. Step the feet in one foot at a time. Draw the belly in to hug the knees in and rock it out. Take the hands behind the thighs, reach the legs up towards the ceiling, point and flex the feet. So we're gonna do a combination of a hamstring stretch with a little bit more abdominal work tonight. Modification, we'll have the knees bent to 90, pointing through the toes. You would take your hands behind your right thigh, touch the left toes down to the ground, and then switch, hands behind the left thigh, touch the right toes. So you're not gonna get as much as the hamstring here, obviously, because the knees are bent, but you'll do that lower abdominal work. Variation of our yogi sit-ups. If you want the hamstring stretching and the abdominal work, you try to straighten the legs up as much as you can. Point through the toes. You hold on behind the right thigh. On the inhale, you lower that left leg towards the ground into the hover and might just be a few degrees away from the body tonight. Your low back needs to stay grounded. You exhale, slowly pulling the left leg up. Hold on to the left thigh. Inhale, right leg down. Ideally to the same degree, you're trying to keep the left leg as straight as possible. Exhale, slowly pull the right leg up and onward you go. So you continue to move side to side. The hands behind the opposite thigh are gently drawing that leg towards the body with the leg straight. We should be moving with precision and control. The mouth and jaw are not doing the work, so put a little smile on the face. We're using our lower abdominals here, yogi sit-ups. They do tone and strengthen the muscles of the front of the core. They massage our internal organs, a little bit of compression side to side. More stretching, move the hands up to the calf muscle. You may float your head up towards your knees. Exhale, lifts the leg, switch hands, inhale, slowly lower. So this isn't a quick scissoring movement. You're exhaling to lift the leg, that's where you're really gonna do the work. Inhale to lower. Exhale, slowly lift. You're not trying to swing your legs here. You wanna move in slow motion with the breath. The slower you can go, the more we will get out of this pose and the movement. Should be an inhale. And an exhale. If you're inhaling for one, two, three to lower, you should be exhaling for one, two, three to lift. And maybe we're starting to feel a little fire or agni in our belly. That's good. Let's try one more to each side.
After you've balanced yourself out, right to left, we'll take a break. We'll bend our knees, rock it out side to side. Spinal twist, extend the arms up from the shoulders. Exhale, knees to the right. Place a prop under the right thigh if it doesn't easily touch the ground. Place the right hand on the top thigh to deepen the twist. Sink the left shoulder into the ground, turn the head to the left. Close the eyes, slow the breathing down. Relax the body. Surrender the weight of the body towards the ground. Let go of any tension or tightness you might find. The inhale floats the head and the knees back to center. We might find that we need to readjust our low back before we take the other side. Exhale, knees to the left. Left hand on top thigh to deepen the twist. Sink the right shoulder into the ground, turn the head to the right, close the eyes. Think of undoing instead of doing. Let the breath lead you, especially the exhale, let it go. Next inhale, unwinds the body, head and knees. Make sure we come back to center. Take another minute here to do anything else you feel like your body might want this evening. Revisiting our inversion with the legs up, opening the legs out wide to continue to open up the back, the legs, eyes and the knees. Happy babies, bridge lifts, whatever is calling you or whatever you feel like you might need to do before final relaxation. Make sure to balance the body out side to side. Maybe one side needs a little bit more of something than the other, bringing balance back to the body as a whole. And then we'll eventually move ourselves into our final relaxation. So please use the support of pillows, blankets, cushions, bolsters, whatever you have in your surroundings to support the body. Taking those supports behind the knees can help alleviate tension in the low back. Support the back and the head as needed. You're always welcome to bring yourself towards a wall or a piece of furniture and float the legs up the wall, 
or the calves and the feet on top of the seat of a chair or sofa that might be nearby. Adjust the clothing, the surroundings. So that once we are in that comfortable position, we're able to press that pause button. This is where we absorb the benefits of our practice, where we recharge our battery, fill our cups up. We let go of any doing, any expectations. And we allow ourselves to simply be and breathe. Letting go of any expression across the face. Soften the brow, the eyebrow center. With the lips softly touching, release the tongue and lower jaw to gravity. and feel a quality of heaviness come over the whole body. Feel the weight of the arms from the shoulders to the elbows and to the wrists, the backs of the hands. Let the fingertips curl up naturally Feel the weight of the legs relaxing from the hips through the knees into the ankles, the feet and the toes. Relax all the way around the torso the waist and the abdomen. Relax all the abdominal muscles, the internal organs. Notice a subtle rise and fall of the belly with the breath. Relax the whole body. Relax the breath in the body. Allowing that breath to be easy, quiet, and calm. If the mind wanders, Gently bring it back to this peaceful breath, giving ourselves just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender, and to simply be and breathe.
We'll slowly come back to the natural breath in the body. And breathe life back into our body, waking up the toes, the fingertips, rocking the head side to side. Roll the wrists and the ankles. On the next inhale, stretching the arms back overhead, pointing and flexing the feet, spreading the toes and the fingertips, taking a nice long body stretch, side to side, front to back. On the exhale, arms float down, step the feet in one at a time, and then draw the knees back into the body, rocking out the back. Right arm falls beside the head. We roll all the way over onto our right side, pausing in Supta Balasana, sleeping baby pose, cradling the head on the arm. And then keeping the eyes closed or soft, press down into the ground and using the hands to walk our body back up where we will revisit any comfortable seated posture to finish our practice this evening. I'll finish with our own Purnamara mantra. If you have a mantra sheet at home, you can follow along. We want to sit up tall on our sit bones, bring the hands back into chin mudra on the knees, palms up. Lengthen and extend the spine upwards towards the sky as we allow the lower half of the body to sink towards the earth. Either sit with your breath here or taking a deep breath in to begin. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Tat Sat And then be mindful of our surroundings. We'll float our arms back beside the body, palms up. Deep breath into the nose. Let's reach those arms all the way up to the ceiling and let's gather up everything we need for the rest of our evening. Turn those palms back out, even bigger breath out, floating the fingertips all the way back down to the ground and letting go of all that other junk we don't need. And one more time, inhaling arms up. Palms touch, exhale, hands to heart. Humbly bow the head to the heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and anyone else that made it possible